Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today's unboxing first impressions watch is the uh, Tag Heuer Monaco Golf Special Edition from 2018. This one's really interesting. I've wanted to see a Monaco in person, at least spend a few days with one for a while now. It's got some interesting history. This one, again, is the co-branded version with the Golf icon just above the date cutout at the six o'clock position in between the date and the hand stack. This one also has the interesting dial uh, color configuration with the blue and with the orange, which is paying tribute to the uh, Porsche 917 that uh, Steve McQueen drove in the uh, film Le Mans. So, uh, I mean, it's got some fun tie-in. If you're a Steve McQueen fan or if you're a motorsports historian or lover, you're gonna enjoy this watch. So, I mean, uh, some really fun things to see, but or logically speaking, this, I mean, there's debate as to which was the very first automatic chronograph uh, released to the public. Some say it was the Seiko Pogue, some say it was the Zenith El Primero, and some say it was the Hoyer Caliber 11. So, you know, I, I actually don't know which one. They all came out right around 1969. And uh, who's to say which one is the first or the best? Everyone has their own opinion, but I'm just excited to see the watch in person, the dominant square stance, especially on wrist. This being 39 millimeters in diameter, but you know, being a square shape, this one plays bigger. And I'll also drop it in next to a couple of my other watches, my Seamaster, my Air King, my Submariner, my Sumo. I'm actually wearing the Blue Coral Sumo today. Uh, and you guys can see it, it stacks up pretty favorably in the uh, presence department to those other watches. And I, man, I just love some of these details like this crystal. Check out this proud square crystal that has a barrel form, a, uh, a curved form from east to west. If you guys can see that there, that is, that is awesome. Paired with the horizontal applied markers, on the dial, the bi-compacts layout, the organized nature from the date window to the Gulf Co branding, to the hand stack, to the Hoyer, to the Monaco. I mean, this thing has got a lot of things going on, not to mention uh, the way the uh, module is set here. So we have your chronograph pushers on the right side and your main crown signed here with the Hoyer logo on the left side, the nine o'clock side. So, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot going on here and I enjoy it, I, I really do. Let's turn the watch over and take a look at the case back, and I'll talk about the movement briefly. This is the Caliber 11, which really is based off of a Solita SW300, and they add a Dubois 2006 module here, a chronograph module. So you guys can see very tasteful finishing, micro perlage work, Geneva striping. I don't see blued screws. They, they appear to be black polished. Uh, we'll get some macro video when we do the full review. But it's nice to see this uh, chronograph through the exhibition window. And let me show you the action. It's, it's kind of interesting having these big uh, oval, rectangular, kind of a hybrid form angled near the top and bottom of the square case. But the action is nice. There's a lot of real estate for your finger. Easy to start, stop, and reset. So we have uh, running seconds here and then elapsed minutes. You can, you can time something up to 30 minutes. There is no hour counter or anything like that. It's uh, really meant for timing brief, uh, just brief activities. Now let me give you some wrist shots in natural light as we wrap up the first impressions video. Again, I talked about the wrist presence. I talked about the detail work of the crystal, the dial. There is, <laughs> there is a lot going on here and I find it very unique. I, I have a thing for 70s watches. I know this came out in 1969, but really it, it became well known in the 1970s. I love the Captain Willard, the 6105 from Seiko. I love the, uh, the Royal Oak, the Genta design. The uh, 5711 was also a 1970s uh, creation, the Pogue. I mean, there really is some great stuff from that era. There's also a lot of stupid stuff from that era, and I would classify the Monaco as, as one of the great ones. And it, so it's really cool to have this in hand and check out this strap here. Again, we have orange and blue. It is vented here. We have a nice polished uh, buckle that you guys can see carries a very dominant Hoyer logo. I really enjoy seeing that. It is a push button release. And uh, you know, just 
again, a lot of fun details, and uh, this is gonna be fun to spend some time with. So I wanna thank Richard of Saltzman's Watches for lending this example in for, uh, for review, for comparison. And guys, if you're shopping for Tag Heuer, you're shopping for Breitling, you're shopping for Oris, shopping for G-Shock or Citizen, definitely reach out to Richard. He's a big watch fan, and he doesn't play any of the silly games that some authorized dealers uh, do when it comes to pricing. He'll give you an aggressive and appropriate price per the brand and model when you reach out to him. So his contact information is in the description. His website is in the description. So uh, th that's there for those that are interested. And guys, if there's something specific you would like me to cover when we do the full review, please let me know in the comments or you're welcome to send me a private email if you wish. Thanks for watching today, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.